So people say to me, hey, what's better than a Radio Oddity GA2S? And what I tell them is, two Radio Oddity GA2Ss. So before we get started, I did want to say that I was contacted by the folks at Radio Oddity, and they asked if I would be interested in reviewing this radio and doing some testing and evaluation. Of course I said yes, I like to make these kind of videos, I like to play around with ham equipment, so they sent me these two radios free of charge. You can pick them up for about $24.99 off of Amazon, and I'll include a link below. So we can see from the packaging that this is a UHF radio that operates from 400 megahertz all the way up to 470, which is a little bit beyond the ARS or ham bands. You also see an FCC ID here, but this isn't for Part 90 or Part 90 certification. It's actually for Part 15 certification. Let's go ahead and open the box and see what it ships with. Well, on first glance, we can see that there's a user manual in there. And I always like to take these out and put them aside and say we don't have any need for user manuals. But in taking a look at this user manual, it's actually very well written for being a Chinese radio. It comes complete with screenshots and instructions on how to do the programming. You can program this radio with Chirp, or you can program it with a piece of software or CPS provided by Radio Oddity. In this video, we're going to use Chirp. The next thing we see is an ear mic, and uh, you can use this with Vox or with PTT. I don't have much use for them, never really liked them. We also have a UHF antenna. It looks kind of Baofeng-esque, if that's a word. But anyhow, it's a standard antenna that you get on uh, Chinese handheld radios, but it's specific for UHF. We also have a docking station, and what's unique about this is it actually runs off of USB, which I find to be super handy. Um, that way you can charge it off of an external battery, you can charge it off of a carport, uh, lots of ways to charge it. And then here's the pocket clip. It also comes with a separate USB charging cable because you can charge these radios directly. There's no need for a docking station or charging cradle. And here's the radio. It's a relatively small and lightweight radio, but it feels pretty durable and uh, pretty well built. On the side you can see the push to talk and monitor button. And on this side, you have a port for a headset uh, or microphone or programming cable. Let's see if I can get this thing open. Here you can see the speaker mic or programming cable input, and you can also see a USB port. That USB port, as I mentioned, is for charging. It is not for programming the radio, so don't make that mistake. It also comes with a lanyard. I don't really use lanyards on radios, but some people do, so it's a good thing they ship it. And then here's the battery. It's a 1500 milliamp battery, and it is also 3.7 volts. So it's not as high powered as some of the other batteries you see on handy talkies, but that's because this radio is limited to 2 watts. It has two power settings, high and low. I didn't see where that was defined in the uh, programming manual, so I think it's 1 watt and 2 watts. Okay, now I'm going to show how you charge these radios using the two methods. We're going to use an Anchor Power Core portable lithium ion battery or ba battery bank as some folks call them. I always do this the wrong way. I think I got it this time. Success. Okay, now the cradle will light up green and when I put the radio in, if I can figure out how to do that, oh there we go, the light should turn an orangish color um, and it does in real life but it doesn't really look that way on the video. It'll stay that orange red color until the charging of the battery is complete. Now we're going to go ahead and do the direct charge method. So I look inside the port and I find the USB outlet and I go ahead and I plug that in. And then I take the other end and plug that into the anchor power core just like I did the charging cradle. And after forcing it in, we have success. You can see the light when the radio is glowing red. It will turn green once charging is complete. To charge these radios, we're going to take advantage of a Baofeng radio charging cable. You can pick these up off of Amazon for about 10 or 15 bucks if you don't have one, but most people who are buying these types of radios already have one from a previous Baofeng purchase. So I go ahead and I take this cable and I make sure that I firmly seat that into the speaker mic port. I want to push it all the way down until it has a loud audible click. And then I go ahead and I take the USB end. And this is the confusing part. I'm going to plug that directly into my Raspberry Pi. And we're going to program with Chirp, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so here we are at the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go ahead and open up Chirp by clicking on the menu and then going down to Other. And there's Chirp. Once this loads, I'm going to connect my radio 
and then I'm going to go to file actually I'm going to go to the radio menu and then I'm going to pick download from radio this will allow me to get the stock configuration I have to select my port which is USB and then I pick the vendor which is radio oddity and then I pick the model once this is done I'm going to go ahead and click OK and that's going to begin downloading the contents of the radio to my Raspberry Pi here you can see the frequencies that ship on the radio I'm not going to use any of this so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight them all and then I'm going to delete I'm going to program my own frequencies in so what I do is I just select the first one and then I use the shift key while I arrow down to pick the rest I'm going to right click and then I'm going to put delete frequencies I believe that's what it says Let's take a quick look at the settings tab. You can see here that I have the voice prompt enabled and it's in English. I can set this to Chinese or I can turn it off. The radio has a scanning function and when this is enabled and you have the memory channel set to be scanned, you can hold in the monitor key M-O-N-I and it will begin the scan. You can do this based off of time or you can do it based off of channel. You can use Vox. I don't really use it so I'm not going to go ahead and click that. Also, you can get a warning for low or high voltage. It's a good idea to leave those on, and you'll get an audible beep in the case you hit a low or high voltage. I have battery saver enabled, which will prohibit TXing when the battery is low. And I can adjust my squelch level. Okay, back to the memories tab. If I click on radio from the menu item, what I can do is I can pick the ability to load default configurations. And what we're going to do here is we're going to pick the hailing frequencies for the United States. Now it's going to have more than a 70 meter band, so we're just going to import that one. The other options are grayed out. I use the auto button to put this one in the first channel slot. Hit OK. And there we go. It's programmed that easy. I can also program repeaters using a query to internet-based repeater repositories. In this case, I'm going to use repeater book, and we're going to do it based off of proximity. So I just type in a location, for example, New York. And then I put in a distance, and I'm going to put in 25. Not entirely sure if this is miles or kilometers. I think either one's probably a pretty good guess. And then I have to select the band. And in this case, I'm going to pick the 70, meter, 70 centimeter band. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull back a number of repeaters that meet my criteria. And there you go. I can just use the checkbox to pick the ones that I want to import and the ones that I don't want to import. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to deselect all of them and then just pick a few. And then using the auto button, it'll order them starting with the first memory slot. When that's done, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then those repeaters are going to be written to the configuration. When you do this, you can see it automatically sets the tone and the offset, which is a pretty handy feature. I can also highlight one of the memories and click the properties tab and that way I can do some extra configuration to the uh, to the channel setting like I can set the uh, wide band narrow band setting I can change the power I could change the tone I could put a CTCSS uh, there's all kinds of things that I can do okay the last thing we need to do is go ahead and write the configuration back to the radio so I pick radio and I pick upload to radio which is the second option I'll go ahead and get the configuration settings that I made earlier, click OK, and then it's going to go ahead and write the memories to the radio and any settings I made on the settings tab. Now that that's done, let's do a little bit of testing. I'm going to test this radio at one kilometer. And uh, what we're going to do is view that via GQRX on my Raspberry Pi, and then we're going to do a radio to radio. Testing the radio oddity, GA2S, handheld radio, testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing the radio oddity GA2S on 2 watts. Testing 1, 2, testing 1, 2. So like I said, two of these radios for $24.99 shipped to your house seems like a pretty good deal. I really like the way that you can charge these directly with a USB cable. Anyhow, if you made it this far, I'd like to say thanks for watching. If you want to see more content of a similar nature, go ahead and click like or subscribe. Or leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. A big thanks to Radio Oddity for sending these radios to me for review. I really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.